A combined footing usually supports two columns. When the footing is rectangular and uh, the layout is concentric and the loads are symmetrical and the same order of magnitude, the design is relatively simple. But it can be more complex when uh, there are geometric constraints, uh, the columns are eccentric or uh, the order of magnitude uh, are substantially different. This is Javier Encinas. And today we're gonna design completely from scratch an eccentric trapezoidal combined footing using as deep foundation. Let's get started. In this example, the exterior column is very close to the property line. So there's a geometric constraint in this area. The footing cannot extend beyond the property line. And the interior column has a heavier load. So this combined footing could be trapezoidal as shown here. The loads are as follows. In the exterior column, the dead load is 50 and the live load is 35 kips. The interior column, the load is 100 kips and the live load is 75. So the loads in this column are substantially higher than the exterior column. The allowable bearing pressure is 3000 PSF. Let's get started in the ASDIP foundation. When you create a calculation in ASDIP foundation, this is a typical uh, uh, form. In the geometry tab, you enter all the information regarding the footing and the columns and uh, the loads, materials and reinforcement tabs. Let's enter the information that we know that was given in the statement. We know that the distance between columns is 12 feet and the distance between the center line of the exterior column to the property line is one foot. Column to column is 12 feet and the edge distance in the exterior column is one foot. The rest of the numbers will be calculated in the program. For now, let's assume that the footing thickness is 18 inches. The soil cover is one foot and the water table is deep enough. So let's say three feet from the ground. So it doesn't affect any, any of the calculations. The interior edge distance is not given. So we will find it in the program as well as the footing width, the interior and the exterior footing width. The concrete pedestals, the typical uh, dimension is 18 by 18, both. So let's enter that dimension. And the pedestal height is, is two feet. The loads, the loads were given in the statement. Depth is Exterior 50, interior 100. Let's enter that. In the loads tab, let's enter the information for the nominal load cases. In the dead tab, exterior 50 kips and interior 100 kips. And live load, exterior 35 and interior 75. Live, exterior 35 and interior 75. So we have all the information already entered. Materials, the material properties for the footing, F prime C, three KSI, and the allowable solvering pressure is three KSF. In the right side of the screen, we can find the at a glance tab with a summary of the results. Here we can uh, see immediately what is failing, what is passing. Here we can see that the allowable solvering pressure has been exceeded in the interior portion of the footing. Graphically, we can see in the bearing tab, we are modeling a combined footing of five feet wide in the exterior end and nine feet wide in the interior end. With this footing configuration, we can see that the allowable bearing pressure in this end is 3.6, more than 3.0. So we need probably to extend a little bit more the edge distance here. Let's do that. Instead of two, let's say three. Now the bearing pressure is 2.9 KSF. In the interior area is uh, 2.4. So we, we could narrow a little bit more five feet if we want. So let's do that. Instead of five, let's say four. So a little bit narrower and the bearing pressure is 2.8. So right now 2.8 and 2.9, which is less than 3.0, that's reflected also in the at a glance tab. 
2.8, 2.9, less than 3.0, the allowable, so the bearing pressure is, is passing. The footing thickness was assumed 18 inches. We can check that now here. This is controlled by the shear, so let's go to the exterior footing. The one-way shear ratio is 0.75, and the punching shear is 0.56, it's okay. In the interior uh, column, the one-way shear, the ratio is 0.95, and the punching shear is 0.75. So we are close to, to 1.0, but, it, but it's still okay, so we, we keep 18 inches uh, thick. So graphically, the footing would look like this, 12 feet between columns, one foot to the property line and three feet in the uh, interior edge distance. Four feet wide in the exterior end and nine feet wide in the interior end. Let's go to the reinforcement. We are using number six rebars in the transverse direction and also in the longitudinal direction in the bottom and the top areas. Graphically, we can see in construction tab, this is the current design. You know, top and bottom rebars, number sixes, 12 number six, and is in the transverse direction on number sixes as well, top and bottom. With this configuration, we can see here in a glance, the longitudinal reinforcement, you know, for the top rebars is 0.87 ratio, which is excellent. And also in the transverse direction, we can see here in the interior column, the bottom bars, the ratio 0.45, which is acceptable. If we go to the condensed tab, we can see here a more detailed set of calculations uh, organized by topic, where we can follow the design. Also, the controlling load combinations are given in this uh, report. If we go to the detail tab, we can see here a more detailed set of calculations, step by step, with the controlling load combinations for each topic, the sliding calculations, one-way shear, with reference to the ACI code. So we can follow all these calculations exposed formulas, reference to the code. Graphically, in the bearing tab, we can see the final bearing diagram, 2.8 KSF in this area, 2.9 KSF in this area here, which is less than the allowable limit. In the diagrams tab, the program calculates the shear diagram for the footing and the bending moment diagram. We can see here the negative moment at the center of the footing, meaning that the top rebars are effectively working to resist this uh, flexure. In the columns tab, the program calculates the interaction diagrams for the two pedestals. In this case, we don't have any moments, but we have axial load. So the interaction diagram shows the capacity of the column, which is okay in both cases, exterior and interior. And finally, the construction tab shows a sketch of the final design, showing the rebars, top and bottom, sizes and spacing. Could be argued that a trapezoidal footing is more difficult to design and difficult to, to build. Uh, probably that's true. Mm, some engineers may prefer to design a rectangular footing, even if this trapezoidal footing is more efficient. As an illustration of how easy we can modify the design and optimize the numbers, we can design this footing as a rectangular footing in as deep foundation. Let's say that is, uh, uh, instead of four and nine, let's say that is six and six. So rectangular, something like that. Let's check how the numbers are. Oh, 
In this case, we are failing in, uh, in bearing, 4.2 versus 3. Graphically, we can go to the bearing design here. 4.2 is too, too much. So we, can we need to increase the width of the footing in this area. So 7 instead of 6, 7 and 7. So we have a rectangular footing that is 7 feet wide. The bearing is still high, 3.6. What about if we increase this edge distance instead of three, let's say four. And now the bearing is 3.0. So it's exactly the limit, so we are okay. So this is the alternative to design a footing like this, rectangular. It's a little bit wider and also with more edge distance but probably it could be easier to, to design and, and construct. Let's go to the numbers here. The one-way shear is failing, we're just in 1%, but anyway, we can, we can uh, change it a little bit. Instead of 18, we can go to 20 inches. And now one-way shear is, is okay. Now the, the pressure is a little bit high, but mm, probably it's just the rounding because the maximum bearing pressure is three and the allowable bearing pressure is 3 as well, so the rounding is probably a little bit higher than 3.0, maybe point, maybe 3.05 or something like that, but it's acceptable, we can, uh, we can go with that. If not, we can increase it a little bit more if we want, maybe 7.5 and 7.5. It's 2.8, now it's working. Graphically looks like that. The diagrams look like that as well, depending moment. And finally, the construction. So we have designed the same footing with two different options. The first option was a trapezoidal footing, more efficient, less concrete. And the second option was a rectangular uh, uh, combined footing, a little larger and uh, wider, more, more concrete. It's a little thicker as well, but probably easier to construct and easier to design. So it's up to the designer what option to select in the final design. Uh, for illustration purposes, we have shown both options in this uh, example. Thank you for your attention and uh, we'll see you in the next video.